And for the first time, Chinese developer Evergrande has defaulted on dollar debt. Fitch cut the company's rating to restricted default after it missed dollar bond interest payments. Hey guys, Mike here. So that's right. Evergrande officially ends up defaulting. Another uh, real estate developer defaulted as well. And so here's the big thing. It's not that big deal. You're going to see all these videos coming out saying the real estate market's going to crash over there. It's going to bring the whole world down. And yes, eventually that will happen. Okay. But I'm going to show you exactly why that's not going to happen anytime soon. And I'm actually going to prove it to you with a video I found from years ago showing that the Chinese government's been through this before and they know exactly how to prop this real estate market up and keep that bubble getting bigger and bigger guys okay and i'll show you everything they've been doing to stave this off now understand i'm also going to show you why the first quarter of 2022 is going to be very interesting and very volatile especially in the chinese market but it could obviously leak over into the united states market as well uh, just because we have a lot of firms fidelity goldman sachs black rock i mean they are heavily invested in china uh you know ray dalio's huge you know big time invested over there so as their economy goes, those firms go as well. And it does affect the whole economy because, I mean, that's where we get all our stuff from. So uh, we'll go through all of that right there. So if you're getting out of it, hit the like and subscribe button for you guys. I really appreciate that. And let's go ahead and just get right into the video. I'm going to show you. It's going to prove. Make sure you look at the date in the bottom left-hand corner and listen to the words to, to, say, you know, to listen and say, wow, this sounds eerily familiar. Developments across the nation generated a cash pile of $1.5 billion by June and revenues of $4.4 billion by November. But then its lofty dreams fell to earth. In December, its sales here were blocked by Shenzhen authorities, swept up, locals believe, in the Beijing leadership's anti-corruption campaign. The entire management team fled its assets frozen. Kaisa's debt soared, worrying investors, which include BlackRock and JP Morgan, that the real estate firm's rising financial troubles would lead to a default on its dollar-denominated bond, a first for a Chinese property developer. One of Kaisa's rivals agreed to buy a stake in the cash-strapped company, but Kaisa's future is still hazy, overshadowing China's current housing downturn. I think the problem with the, the Kaiser Group uh, uncertainty is whether they can actually finish the, uh, the, the development. People probably will question uh, the financial health of the developer uh, and check whether make sure that actually the, these are uh, quality developers and then have the ability to finish. Kaiser has said little about its fate, though attempts to reassure its buyers are on display across its hollow buildings on banners that promise the Kaiser legend will never stop. The concern now is that Kaisa's case is just the tip of the iceberg, and that the trouble in the real estate market will only spill over into an already pressured financial industry. What do you think? You know, same playbook. I mean, it's like deja vu, right? It's the same exact thing you're hearing about Evergrande. And guess who's back in the news? Kaisa. They, they, I think they just defaulted as well, and you know they're in trouble again. But what do you see happening? As soon as they're in trouble. BlackRock, right, doing the same thing. JP Morgan, I don't think they mentioned Fidelity, all right, and all these other groups, what have they been doing? They've been buying more debt up as these, as these companies get closer to default, okay? And then what happened? The Chinese government stepped in back then, right, and helped prop things up, right, because they were not about to let the real estate market go down or even, you know, let them slow down their growth anymore. Because remember, the big reason this is a big deal in China, unlike here, is you know our economy is basically based on the stock market pretty much right it goes down and you know we lose a lot of money over there it's the real estate market right 70 to 75 percent of household wealth is tied up in real estate 30 percent of their economy comes from real estate right i've showed you the numbers of just evergrand alone how many employees come from Evergrande and then their suppliers and everything else. It's it's unbelievable. And so, you know, this to me, I've even read this is the biggest bubble in the planet is the Chinese real estate market, which is just, you know, remember they used to build ghost cities, right? They're building these buildings at such a, a high rate of growth. There weren't even people there to live. They filled some of those cities. Some of those people, you know, places still set vacant, uh, which is what makes Kaiser actually in a better position than Evergrande. One, they're not as big. And two, a lot of their developments are in urban areas 
versus Evergrande, a lot of them in the middle of nowhere, right? They're trying to build some of those cities, those ghost cities, and get people to move in there. Nobody wants those, right? Nobody wants to go buy those things right now. And so, you know, it's the same thing. They've been here before. That was, what, six years ago? And so here we go again. But understand it's much worse now than it was in 2016, okay? And understand the next four to five months is going to be a major, major roller coaster. And I'm going to show you right here why. As you can see this week, almost $600 million worth of bonds were due right here. And you see so there's Kaiser right there, $400 million, did not make that. And if you go over here, you can see uh, Kaiser again got like two more due, which they did not make. Then going into the next week, you got 15 million, which is an easy one, hopefully. Then we go into week four, it's about 34 million. But then at the end of the month, the big problem, you got 414 million due. Uh, there's Evergrande with a couple of them, some around 250 million. Kaiser, once again, I mean, they just have hundreds of millions uh, due this month. And this is why you see China pulling out the playbook right here, guys. In October, they urged banks to relax lending uh, for developers and to free up funds. The premier uh, said China will cut the bank reserve requirements ratio, which they have continued to do. And there is a major, major reason that the president over there has done this and the government has done this because they see what's coming and it is not good at all as you can see the quarterly bond payments will almost double to 19.8 billion in the first quarter and 18.5 billion in the second quarter and you can see it a little bit clearer right here just look at the bonds that are actually going to be maturing uh, the outstanding one bonds and then the outstanding dollar bonds and you can see it is going to be a lot of money coming due, coming up there through usually the first half of the year. And a couple of things compounding the problems for Evergrande especially is because nobody wants to buy their properties. They almost had zero sales in November. And really, think about it. If you are an investor and you're seeing these bond payments aren't getting paid now, and then the amount coming due for all of these developers is going to double right in the first quarter. And you saw that chart they're going to continue to increase right even in the second quarter then you know why would you be buying their bonds okay and understand you know i'm not saying it's a ponzi scheme over there but let's be real about this why did bernie madoff get caught right he ran the biggest ponzi scheme in history uh, in the united states because what he was doing was and this is coming out of his words out of his mouth not mine he was bringing in new investors to pay the old investors the 08 crash hit Therefore, there was no new investors coming in, so we had no money to pay the old investors, and the gig was up. What are these real estate developers doing in China? What have they been doing for years? Selling bonds, bringing in new investors to pay off the old debt, the old investors, right? And what's happening? Major slowdown over there. You had COVID strike, right? And so this has slowed things down for them, and they've been in trouble, as you saw in 2016. This, this is not the first time this is happening. This has been happening for a while now. Now you got Evergrande just happens to be the biggest of them all, pretty much, out there in trouble. And so, you know, Evergrande, bottom line, is going to get broken up, right? They've already sent the government in there, a team in there to help them try to restructure. They've already told the CEO he better start selling stuff to help pay down this debt, okay? And so, you know, they'll try to break Evergrande up to not make them so big to get past this. You know, the bigger question is, you know, one, the smaller developers are toast. Like they're, they're going under, no doubt in my mind about that, with all these bond payments coming due. They don't care about small developers. And so, you know, you're probably going to see them, you know, head south and, and go out of business. But, you know, and the government just take more control uh, because one thing about their communist government, right? They own the banking system. So they can do whatever they want to do. They can prop this up as long as they want uh, until you see another black swan event, uh, probably. Uh, take it down. That's usually what happens. I mean, that's what happened to our real estate market over here, right? And so, you know, that's something that's going to happen. The question is really, when do they want to endure the pain? Because bubbles, all bubbles pop, right? All of them do. And that's the only thing that's certain. It's just, when do they want to endure it now or later? They're trying their best. You know, they know they, know they have to endure pain, uh, economically and so they're i think they're trying to ease a little bit into it but they don't want to go full throttle and so you know because let's be real if if you're a, a citizen over there and i mean would you really really be buying properties right now would you trust that would you trust the system and so that slowed down dramatically i showed that in one of my last videos that the sales have just slowed down 
dramatically. And so that's also hindering the problem. The other question you might have is, well, why is Fidelity and Black, why are they still buying these junk bonds? Why are they really investing? And remember, one, it's not their money. It's your money. It's our money. Okay. And two, you got to think about it. They want to make sure this real estate market stays propped up as long as possible because they have a whole lot invested in China. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, companies that right here, the United States companies that, you know, do a lot of business with China. It's a whole lot. And so they have a, they own also stocks in a lot of Chinese companies. So they need China to stay strong. OK, the last thing they need is you see what happened here. No, when the real estate, when the stock market goes down, it's quick. Right. Crashes. It recovers pretty quickly. When the real estate market goes down, you're looking at a, a long recovery. And it takes everything down with it. OK. And so that's the big difference. And that's why they have to keep that market propped up, which is why the president pulled out all the stops and stuff, as you can see. I mean, they came out just the other day and said, the government team will be sitting at Evergrande headquarters to help oversee risk management. It basically means they're pretty much going to take it over and stuff. Uh, and then also on Friday, another developer, Kaizo, which I was talking about, warned it might fail to pay off 400 million bond due next week. That's why this was last week when it came out, and they did. And then this goes over what I was talking about with the slowdown over there in the real estate market. You got real gross domestic product growth, construction growth, and then real estate growth. And you can see all three of them. See the circle to the right right here? Just falling off a cliff since Q1 of this year. I mean, look at that. And so you see what's happening over there, so you don't think I'm crazy. And then the last person I want you to hear from on this situation is actually, uh, he's a, a world economist. And so obviously he studied China and many different countries. And so at least you get to hear from economists and what they think is going to happen when it comes to these real estate developers going into 2022. Okay. And how do you think the story plays out in 2022? Well, the, you know, there's going to be a lot of defaults. Uh, Kaiser's in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. Evergrande is, is near default. Um, and there's going to be some smaller developers that you we don't even hear about because they're not listed and who are going to default. And the, the market will have fewer players. And hopefully there will be a, 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 a modest decline in overall activity in the property market so they can start popping the bubble. And then at that point, the real question is what happens to the, you know, can they reallocate capital to new growth areas? And that's a scary part because China is not so good at giving money to small business. But that's what they really need to do. And there is now talk about pushing that and local governments being encouraged to lend to small business because that's where the economic growth is. That's where the efficiency is. And that's where the employment is. And of course, I mean, look, they got their issues. We're going to have our issues with 2022, right? Because we'll have the Fed tapering, stopping our bond purchases or lowering it down dramatically, and then maybe even raising interest rates. So how do these two go hand in hand with the two biggest economies uh, doing in two different issues? Obviously, one, we're in the stock market. That's where we're going to see our volatility there in the real estate market. How's that going to affect us over here? I don't know. You know, let me know what you think in the comments. I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> so, you know, I don't see how that could be a positive thing. But guess what? There's a lot of money in the market and what does our stock market over here do more than anything else ignore the news and just keep going up baby because the bond market in our country is dead and so as long as it stays dead then hey the stock market is the only game in town so we will see let me know what you think is going to happen guys i want to give you the update a lot of you have been asking for this i just wanted to wait to see if they actually defaulted first to bring out the video so i can just do one for you guys and if you want some more updates in the future let me know i'll try to do that as well and so if you got anything out of this please hit that like subscribe button it really helps out the channel i really appreciate that and i'll end up seeing you guys tomorrow hit that link down there in the bottom sign up for a block five account to earn nine percent on your stable coins nine and a half percent on your tether and four to five percent on your other cryptocurrency as well as earn the one half percent back on Bitcoin for every purchase you make on that credit card, guys. I will see you later.